Hello. Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. Wow, even my OBS has a lag on it. Wow. That is interesting. I don't understand why that would happen to my feed. To OBS. Word. Okay, welcome to my Mind Scrambler show, everybody. Uh, I'm just getting started, letting some people come on in and say hello, hello, hello. Looks like my bitrate is good. Looks like everything is working. Let me check on one little thing here. While I've got you here and coming in to the show. Hello, Jaden. Welcome to the show. Ashley, hello, hello, hello. Hello. Honest Digs 231, hello, hello. Excellent. Glad to see you all here today. Um, if any of you are here uh, on uh, not Unlocked, please pop over to Twitch and uh, hop on there at Spike Spencer Speaks so that I can focus on you over here. Over here. That's totally cute. Over here. We're going to talk over here, and then we're going to talk over here and here. So, excuse me, guys. I'm going here. Hmm. It is, once again, <clears throat> a beautiful, stunning day out here on the Gold Coast of Australia. G'day, mates. And hello, high school DXD fan 24. What's up? Hi there, hi there, hi there. Uh, as I was just telling everybody, go over to Twitch and open it up and get on to Spike Spencer Speaks. And that is where I'm doing it live right now. Uh, definitely still having fun. We, uh... Gosh, what do we, we just walked on the beach, and uh, Declan got to play a little bit of sands and uh, chase after some birds like he does. Uh, I know you're probably hearing some, uh, some feedback noise on the microphone, but that's the air conditioner I'm going to leave on for a little bit. It's, it's a little warm out here today, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I know we're going into winter over here, but right now it's, it's in the 80s, I think, somewhere in there. Butterflies, there's one right there. Yep. I am seeing those butterflies. They are they are freaking everywhere. Not like yesterday. Yesterday the butterflies were everywhere. All right, Ashley's over here on Twitch. Thank you, Ashley. Glad to see you. So now we have. Uh, I have let people know that the Mind Scrambler podcast is up and running. Now I've got to start marketing that. And I did my first marketing for Twitch over on LinkedIn today. So there might be, who knows, there might be a couple of people from LinkedIn that pop on in and say how to do. Uh, let's see, Cassandra's birthday was yesterday. Yep, I, I wished her happy birthday. I do know her. Uh, Avox will get canceled in the beginning of July. Avox. Uh, oh, yeah, that. Um, they already told me I believe it's going to go virtual. So um, I will chime in. Uh, via the interwebs uh, if I am here. If I am in LA, then I'll probably also still chime in via the interwebs because I think that's how they're going to do it. Um, I don't know. LA is so up in the air right now, guys. Um, this whole craziness, this is why I wanted to do this podcast today because I wanted to share with people you know, how to, to relax because I see people on Facebook losing their freaking minds. They're fighting over this or fighting over that, and somebody says something about, oh, well, uh, vaccines this or, or, you know, COVID that or et cetera, et cetera, and everybody's just losing their minds. It's like, hey, you know what? None of you are scientists. I know a couple of them, uh, and I listen to what they say, and I listen to the people that are connected that I know. I listen to what they say, and then I'm just like, you know what? Other than that, you need to calm the hell down. So that brings me to my topic today, how to stay calm in times of crisis and um, I have one more I've got my notes here so I can hit all some high points here there we go um, so yeah we'll get into that in a little bit I'm gonna chit chat with you guys for a little while uh, before I start my podcast in about 12 minutes or so Kagato what's up dog um, did not start with the countdown because it's I still don't understand what happened there uh, so, yeah, I may go over that with you today, if possible. I'm also going to order a, an emote or two. I got some ideas. Um, and get started with that. So that's going to be cool. 
And Luigi C, I am fantastic today. Thank you for asking how I is, how I ams, how I be. Um, there we go. Ugh. I'm in a good mood today. I had, uh, I did a lot of, I've been doing a lot of mind work, um, a lot of subconscious work and clearing and just getting myself in the right frame of mind. And it's been very helpful. It's something I recommend to all of you because it's something that's necessary uh, for you to do uh, because your your mindset matters hugely. And so I was reading, um, yep, Decky's here. What? Oh, you gonna go ahead and take a bath? Okay, you might want to change his uh, shorts there. Woo boy. Woo boy, you're wet. Decky, do you want to say hi to anybody? No, 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 no. Oh, uh, high school DHD guy, I have no idea. There are so many of them. I, I think they're like 100. I, it's, it's nuts, so I have no idea. Alex is here. What's up, man? Good to see you. Um, there was a... Uh, there were a couple of trailers that they did for Avox. They were really fun to do, and I did one with my tooth out back when I could take this one out because I can't take it out now. But when it would pop out, I would just be like, "Hey man, what's going on up in here? Hold my beer, watch this." So, uh, but I I did that for the uh, the trailer. It's a lot of fun. <coughs> so I don't know what parts. I don't know what uh, what all they kept in, but it was uh, enjoyable. Or as I would say, enjoyable. Mm. Uh, drink that water down. I had a little uh, sore throat going, but I think it was just uh, me snoring and it just you ever do that. You wake up and you're snoring, and you wake up and your throat hurts, and it's like, oh man, I don't want to come down with something. But you're also tired because you were snoring, like you know, sleep apnea and stuff like that. So you're like, oh my gosh, do I have it? I'm like, no, I don't. I'm good. I'm solid. Because I made the decision. I am good. I'm solid. I tell myself every day, I am healthy. I take tons of vitamins. I work out. I walk. I love staying in a positive frame of mind and just work it out, y'all. So, anyway, that's, uh, that's what's happening on this end. Um, what else? What did I make last night? Oh! Yeah, I did the uh, the baked chicken last night. I, I did. I haven't been going online uh, with the cooking stuff for a little while because it's just it's hard to set all this up, you know, because I got to take all this apart and move it over there and then back over here. And ah, I've ever loud snorts a lot. I wake myself up. Oh, all the time. And what actually wakes me up is Kim hitting me. So, <laughs> like, hey, stop snoring. Uh, let's see. Like Lucy push. You are of service. Uh, do you think that... I have no idea, man. Sorry, I got no idea. You know more than me. Uh, Alex, waking up every morning. My first thoughts are always telling myself the day will be amazing. Then grab my water and feel grateful for it. Excellente. Good job. Alex listens. That's very cool. I love it. Hello, baby. Ah. Oh. Gotta loosen up, and get ready, get ready for the show. Uh, uh, bah, 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 bah. So get that energy going, man. Anybody have any questions for me? Let's get going to the podcast. We will, we will, in about seven minutes. I always give fifteen minutes on the front end before I do it, and they gotta get out of here so I can be not interrupted. And that gives us a chance to chat, and you guys can ask me some questions. You can ask me some questions about the topic if you want to, uh, you know, if you want to talk about how to stay calm in these crazy times. If you have a question about that, I'm going to give about five different uh, tips, tools, tricks, advice, etc. <clears throat> because I mean, literally, we are. I mean, you could go through all the bad stuff all day long, every day. Oh, that's only one thing. Like, calm. No. Mm -hmm. yeah, there we go. That's a huge one I just thought of. I was like, man, how did I didn't think of that one? But even when there's there's stress, there's tension, we can relax fairly quickly because it's not the big overall tension, you know? Uh, and we'll talk about that and how we how we deal with that and how we relax and make things work. Sorry, I feel like I pulled my... There we go. 
we are going to be very, very happy when the massage places open up again, the spas. We are going to go get a full body massage, sit in the sauna. Oh, it's going to be good. It's going to be good, good, good. Yeah, it's really funny watching all this, uh, talking about going back to L.A., and we're like, do we have to? Ever? I mean, we want to live in Santa Barbara anyway, but, uh, yeah, going back to Burbank is just like, ishk, ishk, ishka, ishka. So that means I've got to get my game going. So let's do it. So I've decided, yes, get my game on. I am uh, going to be reaching out and uh, getting more coaching clients and building up some, some shows, some training, some funnels, all that. Making straight on connections on LinkedIn and Facebook and just wherever. I'm, I'm you know, my, my wife is really good at that and I'm going to get better. So I'm going to start doing that, which always leads to other you know, people watching the show or people uh, asking me questions about, you know, coaching or doing a 90-minute strategy session for 99 bucks, which is incredibly cheap. Um, or, you know, or go ahead and signing up for a big coaching program or a full, you know, timeline therapy breakthrough, those kind of things. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. 30 emails today to reach out to new clients. Good on you, man. Good job. Way to go. Sending 30 emails out to potential clients today. Oh, there they go. All right. Okay, all set. I go live in about four minutes, so I'll knock it out. Have a fun day. Well, I am live, but not on the doing the actual podcast. So the 15 minutes that I do the podcast, the 15 yeah, minutes I know. After. I know. There you go. I, know. I was just giving you shit. Don't give me shit. Give me kisses. That's the way. Hey, everybody. Blech. All right, you get sand on your shoulder. I got a lot of things on my shoulder. You got a chip up there? <laughs> hey, you. Uh, so, all right, guys. Uh, so, everybody, everybody said hi. I'm sure she says hi back. She's got dick in there. So, she's working with him. Oh, and, uh, yeah. I'm ready to talk about some relaxation because, <laughs> oddly enough, relaxation is active. You have to actively relax. I know, it sounds bizarre. Let's see. Uh, there we go. All right, guys. So, does anybody have any questions about how to stay calm in the when everything's going crazy. And then the shizzle hits the nizzle. What do you do? What do you do? What do you do? I'm gonna tell you, buddy. Hey, buddy. Make sure I look good. Hair's looking good. Hair's up. Hair is up. Yeah. As long as the hair is up. That's the important part, man. That's what we are really, really needing. Okay. This microphone a little closer to my face. Angle it up. Angle it up. Angle it up. There we go. Yo yo yo. Checking on the levels. Yo yo yo. Okay, so here's what we want to talk about. Pop it up it up up up. Let's raise those levels just a touch. All right, people. Here we go. We're up in the yellow. We like the yellow. The yellow is good. The yellow is our friend. Okay. Two minutes and counting. Two minutes, Dougie Fresh, you're on. Uh, uh, on. Uh, uh, on. Onch, 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 onch. Anniversary of Fire Emblem today. Is it the anniversary of the Fire Emblem, the first one that I was Prince Marth in? Prince Mars, Prince Marth. I don't even remember. It was spelled both ways. But I was him. I was he. I was the main man back in the 90s. Ah. So if that's the anniversary, then awesome. If it's the other anniversaries that weren't, didn't feature me as the lead, then who cares, really? I mean, come on. I mean, really, come on. Does it really matter? I wasn't in there. Okay. Okay. 
All right, people. Let's turn this off. Woosa. Woosa. Serenity now. All right. So we are at uh, 1214, about to pop over to 1215, which means I'm going to start my podcast. So everybody remember on Unlocked and here on Twitch, if anybody pops in and saying, why aren't you talking to me? Because they know I'm on my podcast. I cannot talk to you when I'm on my podcast for 30 minutes. And then I will come back and we'll chat. We'll chit and or chat and I will answer your questions. Okay, here we go. Hello, everybody. Welcome to my Mind Scrambler podcast. I'm Spike Spencer, and how's my hair? Is it is it looking good? It it, it seems to be uh, working its magic today. So, again, we are live from the Gold Coast of Australia, and it is a stunningly beautiful day. Butterflies everywhere. The sea, the surf, the sand. It's gorgeous. I'm looking out over the gorgeous blues and greens of a Gold Coast coastline. It is, it's amazing. It is amazing when you walk out there, all these big buildings. It's like, it's kind of like Miami, only it's longer. And it's just, I don't know, it's just cooler, I think. Um, that's my own opinion. You can have your own opinion and that's fine. But this is my show and that's my opinion. Okay. So today I wanted to cover uh, a little bit about how to stay calm in the craziness that's happening in our world right now or anytime. It really doesn't matter. There's crazy things that happen in people's lives all the time. So uh, the title is, um, Hey guy, relax buddy, chill friend. Hey friend, relax guy, chill buddy. You guys might remember that from South Park. Those guys, I love it. Hey buddy, hey guy, how you doing friend? So that's the idea behind this today. It's like, hey buddy, why don't you calm down? Now, how do we calm down? How do we stay calm when everything around us is going absolutely insano? Captain Insano. Well, there are many ways. There are tips, tricks, advice. I'm going to give you several here today. Um, you can implement some. And as usual, I say, hey, look, you know, whatever I tell you to do, uh, you take what you want. You leave what you don't. Uh, it doesn't matter. It's a Chinese buffet right here, baby. So take a little bit of what you want. And again, if you are in a state that is so not calm that you actually need help, I'm not going to tell you to not get that. I'm going to tell you, hey, if you need actual help, therapy, something along that line, because you are way too stressed and you may need to be medicated, then absolutely go get that. I'm not a doctor. I'm not going to tell you to not do medical things. However, there are a lot of other alternatives that we're going to talk about, and most of it has to do with mindset. Let me give you a little background of how I came to this. Some of you know my story, um, but I had uh, business. I had a lot of uh, real estate, some properties. I had a big house uh, and a, uh, a beautiful wife. I had my dogs. I had uh, land. I had a lot going for me, and I was in movies. I was in like I had like five films going that I was in over the course of the year, and then suddenly everything came tumbling down um, as my wife had an affair, and I lost literally everything in an incredibly short amount of time. It was basically overnight. Once I found out, I filed for divorce the next day. Um, and I'm like, I don't play when it comes to my boundaries. That's another podcast. Um, and when that happens, it is so fast. It is so mind numbing and it is, it's destruction. It's catastrophic. It rocks your world and your inside, your core, and you are done. So through all of that, I learned that I had to be stronger. I had to be calm in the face of adversity. Because as things happen, it was like it would, anything that would happen is like a punch. It, something hits you, and then another one hits you, and another one hits you. It's like these waves out there. One hits you, and then another one hits you, and you're down. You just, once you finally just almost get up, bam, it hits you again. Once you just get up and bam, it hits you again. And it's very, very difficult to stay calm and keep your wits about you when something like that is happening emotionally. A lot of people are going through that right now. They who have not been through uh, rough times before. This is brand new for a lot of people. 
So they don't have the techniques, they don't have the tools, they don't have the mindset needed right now. So they're in the thick of it. You can't, like I said, you can't, um, what was the thing I said uh, a while back? I had a really great um, quote, I think is, you can't tell somebody how nice their ring is when they're punching you in the head. You kind of got to wait until they're done. And if something's punching you in the head, you're like, oh my gosh, I, I don't know what to do. You're in reactionary mode. You're getting you're getting pummeled. You know, what do you do when you're getting pummeled? You know, you got to curl up and wait for the pummeling to stop or you got to fight back. And in order to fight back, you have to use your mind. Um, you have to think. That's why fighters, they train. So they train their mind so that their emotions don't get the best of them in uh, battle situations. So let's talk about that for a second. When you are in reactionary mode, if you're in reactionary mode, that means that you are in fight or flight. And if you're in fight or flight, you are not using your higher brain. You're not using your higher capabilities. Everything has gone to fight or flight, which means adrenaline is pumping and you are reacting to things. In reacting mode like that, you're going to attack or flee, fight or flight. And there are no other options really. So you get stuck. Your world opens up when you are able to calm that fight or flight instinct and use a little bit of your higher mind to come up with a better solution. Like, for example, have you ever been in a fight with somebody? Not a physical fight. I'm just saying like, a, like an argument and your emotions get up there and you start saying stuff that doesn't make any sense to you or to them, but you're saying it anyway. And you know what you want to say, but your lips aren't working. Your lips are saying other things that make you sound like an absolute idiot. And you're like, no, no, I, what I meant to say was blah, blah, blah. It's, it's, ah, because you're so wound up emotionally. Whereas if you were calm, then you would be able to form the sentences and say what you need to say. So this is really important for you in a, on an emotional level, especially with an emotional intelligence these days. Um, EQ is everything. EQ is everything, and you have to be able to to um, you have to be able to access that capability in a relationship, in an argument, in a confrontation. You need to be able to say, okay, let's let's examine what's happening here so that I can have the best outcome for everyone involved. If you're in a reactionary mode uh, and you're not calm, that is not going to happen. So the first step is to look at the situation from a higher vantage point. Let's think of it this way. If I have this in my book, uh, Food Game, A Man's Ultimate Recipe for Dating Success. Uh, one of my chapters is about chill. Hey, buddy, chill, friend. Um, when in doubt, chill. And a prime example of that is um, when the, the towers came down on 9-11 in New York City, uh, the mayor was Rudy Giuliani, and he was a very, very good mayor um, to a lot of people, and not that great to some, but it doesn't matter. That's always politics. But during that time, he was a great mayor. He was a great mayor because when everything happened, he was calm, he was cool, he was a leader. And that's, that's mostly the consensus of people that like him or don't. It doesn't matter. But he was cool and calm. And something he said in an interview, he said, you know, his father told him that when everyone starts to go up and crazy and running around and, you know, everyone starts to lose their mind, he goes, you go silent. You chill, basically. So when everything's going crazy around you, you need to be the center of the hurricane, Another prime example for this is within relationships when, for example, Kim, if she gets upset with something, not, not particularly me, just, you know, a situation. Uh, and this is something I say, this is more toward uh, the guys and, and dealing with, with uh, women. When you're in a relationship, a woman will get uh, very emotional sometimes in a state that she is really, really ramping up. And you might want to meet that with that same energy, but that would be a mistake. What she's doing, she's figuring it all out. And what she needs is a calm at the center of her hurricane, or as I call it, the hurricane. <laughs> when she gets like that, I go silent and I chill and I wait. 
And when she is calm, and I go, okay, do you want my help or do you just want me to listen? And that is being calm. Whereas if I try to do something without being in that state of calm, a fight will ensue. That's just what's going to happen. And that's probably happened to a lot of you out there who have tried to you know, fix something that wasn't needing fixing. But what it did need was a moment of calm. If you are the person who is calm in any interaction, you are the winner. If you find yourself emotional and reactional in any interaction, you have already lost. So finding that calm in the hurricane is the key. Now, this has all been reactional so far, and what I wanted to tell you is there is training to get you to that point. I went through a lot of it uh, when I was learning to come back from my divorce and bankruptcy and losing everything and the work that I had to do. And it is things along the line of meditation. Meditation is... is really, really amazing. My, my wife does transcendental meditation. Uh, I will get into that. I do subconscious meditations and uh, magnetizing meditations and things on my own as well. Um, so, but by meditating, I don't mean you have to do something wild and crazy. Wow. Well, that would be my son screaming in the back room. So no, nothing bad is happening. He does that. So, hey, welcome to my professional podcast. Hey, man, you know what? I'm doing this from our place in the Gold Coast of Australia, which is an Airbnb and not a studio. So if you hear anything, that's great. Welcome to my world. Um, Anyway, so the meditation that I talk about, it really doesn't have to be anything more than breathing. If you know how the old adage that said, uh, you know, if you are going to uh, if you're going to do something before you make a decision out of haste or anger or anything like that with a family member, etc., take 10 deep breaths. Well, okay, take those 10 deep breaths. It helps you relax. And what you've just done is a 10 breath meditation. You don't have to go all and all that stuff, but it is centering yourself. That is something that you do, like if you train in martial arts, what do you have? A center. You need to center yourself before you can attack or defend. Well, that's what you're doing with your mind and your emotional set. You are centering yourself. And once you center yourself, you can then act from a place of strength, serenity, and calm, and you can reason out what your next move would be. Whereas if you acted out of haste, then it could end very, very badly. Because when you are really amped up, you're not thinking clearly. So that's one part. And um, if you and if you can't argue with someone, if you can't, when you're in that mix and you're talking to somebody and, and you just can't do anything, you need to tell them as well. Hey, I need, I need a, I need a break. I need, I need. Let me take 10 deep breaths. I'm going to walk in the other room. I'm going to take 10 deep breaths. And then I'm going to come back in so that I can talk to you clearly because I, my emotions are getting the best of me. So don't let your ego get in the way of good, solid communication. If your ego gets in the way, then you're going to just keep fighting. You're just going to keep fighting. And I'm speaking from, uh, <laughs> my hand is in the air, guys. Uh, I, that's something I work on. You know, I've got a healthy ego. Surprise. And I defend it. And, you know, sometimes I know it's not the best thing for me to be defending my ego and, you know, jumping out there and, 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 and talking when I should be listening. Which brings me to my next point. Listening. If you are not calm, you are not listening. Listening is a huge, huge problem in our world today. People are not listening to understand. People are not listening to gather more information and see if they can be of service, if they can help, if they can really connect and communicate with other people. Most people are listening to talk. 
They're listening, waiting for the other person to stop talking so that they can say what they want to say, which does nobody any good. Why have a conversation? It's not a discussion. It's just two people monologuing and not connecting or really listening. So one aspect of staying calm is to actually listen to what's being said. Actually listen to what's going on in the world. Listen with your heart. Listen with your mind. Listen with your gut. When you're calm, you can listen with all of that. And that is incredibly important because the universe is giving you cues all the time. Some people are more attuned to it than others. I mean, I know a lot of people that are very, very successful, and they're very, very calm. They don't fly off the handle. When you fly off the handle, that's when you make bad business decisions, bad relationship decisions, bad dating, marriage decisions, bad family decisions. Flying off the handle is good for nobody. So you need to find that center of calm within yourself. And you have to train it. You have to train it. So the next time you feel, you know, all excited and upset and, and angry, just go, hey, buddy, just hear that in your head. Hey, buddy, calm down, guy. <laughs> Chill, friend. Everything's cool, buddy. Because everything is cool. Which brings me to another thing. Let's talk about faith. Let's talk about faith. Now, I'm not talking about faith in the religious sense. I'm talking about faith in that everything is going to be all right. Think about that for a second. Everything is going to be all right. If you believe that, then there's no need to be upset. There's no need to be angry. There's no need to be emotional. If you know in the end everything is going to be okay, then you can calm down and be cool, right? So if you can calm down and be cool, then you again, can make decisions and do things correctly and have better relationships. But if you have faith and understand, you know what? No matter what happens, I am going to figure it out. I have faith that I will figure this out, whatever it is. So you already know going in that whatever problem is happening, that usually is the cause of the emotions and the pain and the anxiety, etc. Well, if you go in and knowing it's going to be all right. Doesn't that take away a lot of it? Of course it does. Of course it does. And uh, Marie Forleo has a quote, uh, a tweet that she tweets out all the time. It's, uh, everything is figure outable. Everything is figure outable. You did not know how to walk. You did not know how to talk. You did not know how to ride a bike. You did not know how to drive. You did not know how to cook. You did not know how to sing. You did not know how to tap dance. Whatever it is, you did not know how to do it. And it could be frustrating at times. It was something you really wanted to do or needed to do. But guess what? You learned how to do it. You figured it out. Life is that way. If you want to figure it out, you will figure it out. So calm down. Calm down. You got this. You know what I'm saying? You got this. And especially during the times of crisis, like right now, a lot of people feel helpless. A lot of people feel that they are in a victim status. Now, this is a problem because one of the tenets, one of the main tenets that I always, always live by, and I always tell everybody, this is my first, any client that comes in, this is like step one. I talk about cause versus effect. Another way to really, really understand how you can stay calm is if you realize that you are in charge of every facet of your life. What you hold in your mind is what you are making happen. If you are seeing all of this craziness right now, this is uh, April what, 21st, uh, the coronavirus is out and about. It's, uh, I wouldn't say it's at its height right now. It's like, it's People are, I mean, like China's starting to open up and, and things are going to be opening up in the next you know, couple of weeks probably, the way things are looking in, in several places. So we've gone through a lot and a lot of people are uh, stuck inside and they, they can't do anything and there's tension. But if you see it as, oh my God, I am a victim, 
then that's a problem because if you're in victim status, you are at what is called at effect, meaning you, the world is affecting you and you are basically a uh, little paper bag in the wind flying back and forth. You have no will, no power whatsoever. And that is the most weak place to be living from, which makes you full of fear, anxiety, and tension. Those three things, number one, are killing your immune system. So that's a bad thing. So calm is going to help you with that. But if you look at it the other way, you say, okay, I am uh, at complete cause. So whatever this is, it may not be the best thing in the world, but you say, okay, I'm at cause. This is my life. I have these things that are happening around me, and that is a situation that I have to deal with. I am in charge of my life, so how am I going to deal with that? I have choices. What am I going to do while this happens? Am I going to turn this into an awesome thing where I'm like, okay, I've got this time. I am forced to be in here right now. It's for the good of everybody out there, so I don't want to you know, give it to anybody if I do have it, et cetera, et cetera. Great. And what can I do now? What can I do here to serve from a place of power and strength? Like what I'm doing with you guys. I'm giving you coaching almost daily on Twitch from Australia while we're all in this together. And that's great. And I feel good doing that. And I'm very calm with all of this. I am not worried about any of this at all. And once you get that, and the other tenet besides being at cause, not effect, is realizing that the universe is a wonderful place. The universe is a great place. And life is for you, not to you. Life is happening for you. So when you look at things that way, you go, okay, here's a challenge. How do I grow? Stay calm analyze. All right. What's the feeling? You cannot feel when you are not calm. You cannot access your higher vibrations and frequencies and all that stuff in your heart and your mind and everything when you're can't do it. So chill, buddy. Relax, friend. Stay cool, guy. That's all you need to do. And you will be in charge of your life in so many more ways. Now, a couple other things I want to throw at you. History. History. Think about it. The problem we have in this world is everybody thinks history began the day they were born. There's never been a time like this in history. There's never been blah, blah, blah. This is so terrible. Blah, 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 blah. This ain't nothing, guys. This ain't crap. You know what? We've gone through so many more terrible things. Hey, ask the dinosaurs how to work out for them. Hey, hi -o. I'm just saying... Guys, we've been through worse, and there may be worse coming. Who knows? But we don't know. Uncertainty is the stuff of life. So if you can't do anything about it, you don't know. Relax. Being tense about things doesn't help anything. I didn't know my life was going to shift that fast. I didn't know I was going to lose everything the next day. I didn't know. You know, and if I had, I mean, you know what? What good would it have done me to be all upset and angry about it? I mean, I was, but going back and looking at it, it's like going, well, all right, that happened. Now, how do I move forward? And that's what I did. I got calm with myself and said, what do I really, really want? And I made the decision. I'm moving to LA. I took off. And that's how I made that decision. It wasn't just a spur of the moment. I really thought about it. And I had to get serious with myself. As do some of you, if you're going through something with a lot of tension and struggle, then you need to calm down. Take those 10 deep breaths. Relax. Center. Be at cause. Remember, everything is for you. So find the lessons that you need to learn so that you can be stronger. Keep that immune system working. The other, Another amazing aspect of being calm is when you are in that fight or flight mode, you are the adrenaline's pumping, your immune system uh, your immune system is lowered, all of that happens. In nature, it's supposed to spike and then come down and stay cool for a long, long time. We don't get that anymore because it's 24-7. Things are bombarding us right and left. Radio, TV, um, all this junk and noise is coming at us. We can only take in so many bits per second, and we're getting bombarded by millions of bits per second. I'm talking we can only take like 140, something like that, per for per minute or per second or whatever, something like that. We're being bombarded with insane amounts. So if that that puts us in the fight or flight mode automatically, 
You know what I'm saying? It puts you in the fight or flight mode automatically. So the biggest thing that you can do right now, right now to get calm, turn off the news. Do not watch the news. It's sensationalized babble. It is crap. It is there for one thing, to scare the pants off of you so that you will watch them later on so that you can get the news, whatever's breaking next, and then you watch the advertisers and their money goes up. That's how it works. So it's a show. It's a show. I've done some news stuff in my day too. It's like, this is news? What I'm, I'm, what, what is this? If you actually listen to the news objectively, sometimes it's like going, that was just an ad for a local store, or that was an ad for McDonald's for crying out loud. You know, that wasn't news. So just stop that. Stop it completely. I, I haven't watched the news in years. I every now and then, if I want to find something, I'll Google it, find a source that I maybe have a story. I'll take a look at it. But other than that, I have certain people that I follow that I, that I trust that I know have their finger on the pulse of what's happening. And I say, hey, what's happening? Cool. As one of my uh, coaches said a long time ago, he goes, man, I don't listen to the news. I don't listen to radio. I don't like any of that crap. If it gets bad enough, somebody's going to call me. <laughs> I said, that's pretty awesome. I dig that. So think about it that way. Do not listen to this stuff. Remember, it does get better. It will get better. And if you make the decision that it will get better, then that will help calm you as well. We have a, a mantra here. Kim and I have a mantra. It's, um, my success is inevitable. My success is inevitable. If my success is inevitable, what do I have to get tense about? No matter what happens, it's exactly what needs to happen at exactly the right time to put me in exactly the right place to make the next step to my inevitable success. If you can think that way, then you are in a powerful mindset. You are in a powerful uh, at cause mindset. Stick with that and it will make you much more calm. If you have, if you have a lot of friends that are on the socials, uh, Facebook, Instagram, you know what they are, um, and they are at effect, they're in victim status, and they are just, it's wine, 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 um, or humble brags, or, I mean, I, I, you know, there's all kinds of things that can just eat at you, then stop following them. You don't have to unfriend them, but you can take them out of your feed. Uh, that's what Kim and I do. It's like, I, I, hey, this person's a nice person, but I'm just, I can't listen to them just every post is, oh, why me? I'm sad. I'm blah, 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 blah. Click, click. I can't. You know, I can offer them help, but they won't take it. There are people who just want to bitch and moan. Let them. Don't join them. Don't listen to them. Don't whatever it is. Just take them out of your mind. And yes, those, if you can hear those sirens, literally, I think we've been here a month and a half. I've heard sirens like twice maybe three times. It's amazing here, guys. It's crazy. I mean, I lived in Koreatown in LA for 14 years. I heard a lot of sirens and helicopters. So anyway, and you want to know what can cause you a lot of tension? If you're worried about that crap, I never worried. It never bothered me. It's like, you know, sirens are going off. Oh my gosh, what's happening? Well, I, I don't know. Something. They're going to help somebody. So great. Anyway, so I'm going to wrap this up here, and let me just go over everything one more time real quick. Um, one, the reaction. Don't react. Be calm. Be the center of that hurricane. You want to chill when everything is going nuts. Calm down and just, and, and just watch. Just observe. It can be one second. It can be five minutes. Whatever it is, just calm down, observe, so you see what's actually going on. That's a big deal. Um, when in doubt, chill. Meditate. Learn how to meditate. And by that, I mean just breathe. Take 10 deep breaths. Consider that a meditation. Uh, if you just tell you, lie down and tell yourself to relax, I'll bet you, you will not realize that your face is still crunched up. Your eyes are still tensed up. That your cheeks might still be tensed up. You have to tell yourself to relax every part because you're like, wait, I don't know. My Oh my gosh, my back is tense. <sighs> oh, okay. Now I'm relaxing because you have to actively tell it to do that. Listen, 
listen to what is actually being said, you will connect on a deeper level. And if you listen to what's being said, you'll find out that you know more than most people. It's kind of amazing how that works out. Knowledge will keep you calm because you know what the heck's going on for real. Have faith. Faith that you are going to figure it out, that things are going to work in your favor because the universe is for you. Life is for you. It's not happening to you. There are lessons, there are challenges, but you get your mind in the right state and you know that your success is inevitable, then you're calm. What's there to get upset about? And finally, at the very, very end, get off the mainstream medias, unfollow those socials that are being a pain in the butt, and don't listen to the radio. Just feed your mind the good stuff that is going to help you get to where you want to go. You know, like the Mind Scrambler podcast. <laughs> yeah, that's right, buddy. Hey, buddy. Chill, buddy. Relax, friend. Hey, guy. All right, guys. It has been a wonderful day, a wonderful podcast. I hope you got some great uh, tips and tricks and training and advice that can help you to relax and stay calm and be the center of the hurricane so that you can have success, better relationships, and a stronger life. I wish you all the best in all things. This is Spike Spencer signing off. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Okay, everybody, that was the podcast. Now that I'm back, hello, Sled EU. Um, thank you for mu so much for joining my Twitch stream here. Uh, when you do that, I, uh, I usually have my mods here. I think some of them are gone. Uh, I don't do any uh, interaction until after I'm done with my podcast. I do 15 minutes, then I do my 30-minute podcast, and then I do 15 minutes on the back end to say howdy to you guys. So welcome. I am glad you are here. And I'm also uh, broadcasting over here on Unlocked as well. Everybody on Unlocked, hello, hello, hello. Good to see you. So if you have any questions about uh, what I covered today, please feel free and chat and or chit, chit and or chat. And let's talk about it. Um, enjoy the podcast. Great advice. Thank you so much. That's what I do with uh, coaching. I give more active, active, uh, you know, tips and tricks and ways to to really put this into. Um, you know, in not more, not just theory, but put it into action. Mm. Oh, all right. Hey, buddy. Uh, you know, I have not watched South Park in a very, very long time. Um, funny thing, when I moved out to LA, so I was a huge uh, Simpsons and South Park and Family Guy fan. Loved them, just loved them. I had in my in my house that um, that I lost back in uh, Kingwood, uh, Texas, outside of Houston, uh, it, I had a pub. I had a room that was all, um, it was all uh, like a dark walnut, and I had on one, it had two uh, little closets, and I took the doors off the closets. Well, I took the door off one closet and made that the dark area, and then in the other closet was where I had a small fridge. It was usually full of Guinness, <clears throat> and some shelves and stuff. And then I had all the booze up there in front and I had two, uh, you know, recliners and I had a PlayStation. I mean, it was amazing. And on the walls was all the things that I got from all over the world. Marshall K87, good to see you again. There's Holly Pill Family Guy. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I loved it. Love Family Guy. Ah, I wish. I love them. Stewie. Yes, uh, mother, mother, uh, mother, mother. I was just saying, I just did a post the other day that said, I understand Stewie a whole lot better now that I have my, my Declan because he's talking away. And I'm like, I have no idea what you're saying. And I said, I swear I think I heard world domination in there. What domination? What? What are you saying, son? Um, but yeah, I mean, it was so cool because I had I had the uh, South Park, like the plushies that were this big and I had some other things that were this big and I had... You know, Mr. Hanky, and I, I had I had them all, so they were all up there. I had Simpsons stuff uh, all around. Uh, I had Simpsons slippers, for crying out loud. Um, and I had uh, Family Guy was just starting to come out. Um, so I didn't have any, I had a couple of things. I had a, I had a Stewie bottle opener, which was cool. Um, and, but I had things that I would pick up all around the world. Uh, like, you know, I had a lot of stuff from Ireland and, and Scotland and England and uh, Australia. 
And one of the cool things I did, and I, I should have, oh, I should have taken that in the freaking divorce. Um, I had, whenever I went to, when I traveled, this started on my, my first honeymoon. Uh, I was drinking beer back then. I really liked beer. And so came to Australia. I'm like going, well, like beer, yeah, great. So we drank a lot of it. And all the bottles that we would get, we would have them soak the, uh, the bottle in some water for a minute, and we would peel the label off. And so when we got home, we had like a stack of labels, of beer labels, and I'd frame them. So the whole thing, I had like this big frame. It was like, you know, two foot by three foot or something like that. And that was all the beers in uh, Australia and New Zealand that we drank. And then I did that in Ireland, Scotland, England, uh, Lake Tahoe, uh, Japan. Uh, had all those. Lost them all in the divorce. I lost a lot in the divorce, man. But I didn't really want to remember those things as much. Sadly, I look at it back now, and I'm like, going, man, that would have been cool to have. But it really would have been something that connected me to my past. And I'm just like, you know what? I'm done with that. I have, I literally have almost nothing that connects me to my past. Um, yeah, when, when Kim moved in, I still had a few things. The only thing I still have is my desk that I have in back in Burbank. Literally everything else is gone. Every single thing that I had. As far as like furniture or keepsakes. I think I have some pictures of my old stuff. Um, uh, like like you know high school stuff and old pictures, but I don't have any like like my ex that sort of thing. That's something that helps you get away from things. Is just get away from them, just get rid of them, just move on. Um, there's a column that comes with that too, guys. You know, because when you uh, I went through some different therapies when I was uh, you know when I was single and I was I was training and getting back to who I was. And there was this one therapy that we did. That uh, I got into state, and then I would turn, and, and I'd go to the front of my apartment, and then I would turn back, and I would say, you know, what is it that I need to remove, or what is giving me the negativity? And I would turn back, boom, and I was like, bam, that, bam, that. I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't know what I didn't know. And one of the things that I had sitting out there was something that my ex's father gave me, and it was a, you know, a Japanese kind of calligraphy set. And I'm like, nope, I, that's going away. So I put that in a box somewhere, and I think I got finally got rid of it. And I noticed one thing. I have, so I had a lamb uh, skin that I got from uh, Ireland in Kilkenny or Killarney. And I also got a sword in uh, the Royal Mile of Scotland. And I used to have it up on my wall, so I put it up on my wall, and I had the sword up there, you know, with the, the blade facing down. And... Um, you know, I did the turnaround thing, and I noticed that. I didn't realize the sword going down was like stabbing. So I t switched it. So now the sword was up, so it was protecting. And I was like, well, that's interesting. I didn't know that. Didn't feel that until I saw it. And I was like, oh, now I feel it. And then I turned it, and the energy changed in the room. Very cool. It's really interesting. I forgot the name of the therapy, though. Uh, did a lot of meditation with it, and then... Um, tweet some things. It's very interesting. Anyway, so that's what it comes to like meditation and training when you get more deep into who you are and you are in control of your emotions, you're in control of your thoughts. That's important. That's really important to you guys because it helps keep you calm when you know what's going on. It's like a lot of times when something's going on and somebody's been doing it for a long time, like, like a newbie uh, in, in the military, you know, there's like the new guy who just got here, and there's the guys who, like, uh, remember Aliens, when they did the drop ship, and it was like, here we go, Roar! and they're like, ah, 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 and the new guy is like, oh my god, and like, somebody wake up, Hicks, <laughs> he's just like, yeah, I've done this a million times, like, mm. takes a nap, I'm like, what, okay, let's go kill some aliens, you know, and uh, it's like that, once you get, if you've dealt with these kind of things before, you go, okay, let's chill, let's take a look, see what we can do. And that allows you also creativity. I really didn't go into that, but being calm allows you to be more creative. And that's really important in business, guys. I have a real estate deal that I have been as creative as I could possibly be. I have thought of every angle, every idea. I have never been more creative. Still a pain in the butt, but it's, you know, I've learned more than anything else. Any real estate deal that I had ever done, I have learned more on this one than any ever 
so, you know, if I do more real estate down the road, which I may, I'm sure I will, but it'll be from a different vantage point, a different mindset, and a different, um, you know, a different level. So that I'm going to be looking forward to. But I've got other things to do that I want to do that I'm going to say, you know what? My success is inevitable. So boom, let's do it. And you can say that for yourself too. You have to mean it. You have to believe in yourself. And that's something I'm working on with when I coach people. I say, look, you know, here's, here's your wins. Here's what you can do. If somebody else has ever done this, ever, whatever it is, then you can too, period. The question is, will you? Will you be in the right mindset, right frame of mind? What will you do? What will you do? Well, being calm will help you with that. Being calm will help put you in the right mindset to get something done. So that's that. Um, well, if, if none of you have any questions for me or want to talk, then I'm going to wrap it up now because uh, I did not sleep very well last night at all. Um, just for some of you guys that you know, I've been telling you a couple of things. I know some people that know some things about what's going on. One of them did a... a two-hour uh, Zoom chat revealing a lot, and I didn't get to get on it. So I'm kind of like, all right, I want to know. I want to know what's happening, um, you know, on some of these things. So we'll see. But, uh, you know, if it gets bad enough, somebody's going to call me. All right? Right. Okay. All right, people. Well, then you have a wonderful day today and tomorrow. And we will see you back here tomorrow at the same bat time, same bat channel, right here on the Mind Scrambler Show. See you later. See you later. Adios, muchachos. Stop the stream. <laughs>